Hi, um, my name is Anya Devine. This is where I have my studio, Kilkenzie House. And I've just uh, had a three day weekend workshop, so still feeling energized actually, uh, but I think I'll sleep well tonight. So the first day we painted Sal, who was our lovely model, on day one. And uh, here is a little bit of film footage of, of my demonstration and things. So I hope you enjoy it. I like to bring the paper. I like to bring the paper to the edge of the board so that um, there's nothing between um, what I'm seeing and what I'm drawing down, that I'm not distracted by any kind of bits and pieces in between, you know. And I'm right-handed, so I've got the paper over to the left side. Um, and my, my equipment is on the right-hand side. So I have my, especially, especially the water, it's, it's good to have on, on easily accessible. You want to be able to easily access your water and the paper towel as well. I want to say, you know, you're all very welcome. Thanks very much for making the effort <laughs> to be here. <laughs> all right, so yeah, so that's the first thing I would say, to find a position where you feel you can easily see the model and see the board by only moving your eyes. Although you want to feel quite physical in the act of painting, so you maybe take a step back regularly as you're working. But when you come to steady yourself in the position where you're looking, then you want to be able to see Sally's face and shoulders and see the board without having to turn, you know, mm. big time. But I find it really important to me to look after myself as I'm working, to make sure I've got enough to drink, keep a, keep a radar up for any, um, this is for you now, mm. to keep a radar up for any tension that might be arising in the shoulders, you know, any kind of, you don't want any any time that anything kind of creeps in like that. Just recognize it and let it drop. Mm. Do you know, it's a sure sign you need to pull away from whatever you were doing. Um, so keep an eye out for how you're feeling. And I think one of the ways that we can do that is by remembering remembering to breathe. And uh, I find it especially helpful to focus on the out breath. And that kind of tunes you into how you are. When you can, when you can hear your out breath, there's something about that that um, brings you back home to yourself. I think I do it a lot in this instance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to start, and I would say to all of you, whether you're here for one day or three days, ease yourselves into the process, and I'll assist you in whatever way I can. So don't feel like you have to know everything before you start. And I'll try not to feel like I have to tell you everything I know mm. before I start, because sometimes, uh, you know, I'll just begin. I'm just going to begin. Okay. All right. And so when I go to, generally what I find um, as a useful beginning is to begin looking with my eyes half closed or maybe without your glasses on so that you can see in the way, uh, so that you can see that the areas of dark and the areas of light and how they relate to one another. Or even just behind your glasses, if you can make your eyes blurry, I don't know, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever way you can see blurry shapes so that you can then identify where the general area of shadow is on the face. And I usually start with that, that's where I usually start. So I'm going to make a colour, and um, this for me is a kind of a shortcut way of finding a, a shadow colour for the skin, is to mix some of the sap green, which looks like that, with the uh, cadmium red. And the cadmium red is that bright one. Um, you know, that's it. Okay, and when I mix the two of those together, I've got enough red on there now that I can use that. And I'm looking at the colour that I'm aiming for as I'm making it. So what I'm looking for is the, the colour, the shadow side of the skin there, and the shoulder, oh, sorry, the shoulder, the forehead, <laughs> is uh, quite bright at the front, and then there's a shadow that runs down the side of the forehead. So I'm just beginning to look. That it's, it's okay, it's good, it's good enough for now. You don't have to get it, um, you know, whatever you're seeing and responding to will be just fine. 
for, for, the, for this stage in the painting. And then I think it um, cools down a little bit again below the nose, so I'm, I'm putting a touch more green back into it again below the nose there. So the shadow that's cast by the nose and runs along here, and then I could even connect the two together and later um, place, place the mouth once it's a little bit drier. And I'll just put a, an indication of where the, sh the sh shadow for the socket of the eye on the other side of the face would be as well. And maybe a touch of yellow ochre would be quite good there, linking up the shadows on the right hand side. So it's, what I'm aiming to do is like the bass and music to hang it all together with the areas of tone, you know, to kind of get a feeling of order happening in the face and mouth. So this is yellow ochre now coming into the mix. <coughs> and with my eyes half closed, all of this side is generally darker than the forehead and the cheek on this side. I mean, there is a bit of light on the cheek there. Okay. And then down for the neck as well, of course. I'm just going to use the two-inch brush here now. And these brushes, I say to people, it's like driving a car when you become familiar with using them. And there's a lovely feeling holding them, actually. They're but nice brushes to hold. Did, you, did anyone get them? Did anyone, mm. did anyone not get them? <laughs> I suppose you've all got some sort of, you don't yeah. have, yeah, there's some sort of white brush anyway, I think most people, and if you don't, you can learn, you can have a go at these ones. Okay. Um, but they allow you to make, um, they allow you to fill in quite a bit of space with the paint. I'm just checking out now here to see where the neck ends and, uh, and the space around the neck starts, or the collar starts, mm -hmm. and that diagonal as it runs through the face, it would, it would cut through the nose from where I'm standing. So I know it would be roughly about there. Uh, and then I can, I can bring it up. So the back of the neck where the collar meets the neck at the back would be pretty much level or a little bit higher than the jawline. So that's what, where I know where to, where to end the neck at the back. <coughs> maybe just put a little bit of cadmium red in to warm up the ear. So you're kind of finding um, finding the, shape, the general shape of the skin and the darks and lights that sit within it in a fairly, it's quite loose isn't it? You're, you're allowing um, you're allowing the paint, you're allowing the water to transport the pigment for you and then um, you know, just finding, easing your way in, really. Easing your way in. Okay. Now I want to do something in the body. Because <coughs> there's been a few kind of considered moves. These are made with a fair amount of care, you know, and then it's quite nice to do something that's not so tight. It's good medicine for us to do both, I think, as we work. So I'm mixing the ultramarine blue with the Van Dyke brown. Gosh, loads of brown. I wanted it to be more blue than brown, really, so I'm putting more blue in now. I'll use it anyway, sure. It's a lot of paint there now. And I want to make it more like an Indian ink consistency. And holding the, the brush um, pretty much parallel to the paper allows the water to be the thing that pushes the paint around rather than the brush. Let's see. I wanted there to be more water in it, so more water on the brush, scooping up the paint. And then I want it to kind of be laid on in this direction because that seems to be like a good direction for the body to go in. Jeez, is that 20 minutes already? No, it's so, so keep us <laughs> Okay. Alright, so let's see. <laughs> Some of those are kind of worth moving off. You can always use your palette as a shield to stop it hitting parts that you don't want it to hit. But it's quite nice to do something loose and lively from the shoulder early on, even if it's on a separate bit of paper, just um, because it's just good fun. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>
few minutes ago. Photographs as you're going on with this? Yeah, yeah, that's fine with me. Yes, and um, if if uh, thank you, if it's just me rather than of the model as well. Cause of what you're painting, I mean. We're fine to do of me and what I'm painting. Thank you. Yeah. And so the, in the same way as you found the position of the neck through drawing the, the line where the neck stops and the space around it starts by drawing that through the face, you might also find the position of the shoulder by seeing where it would enter and exit the face. And I'm going to do that here, yeah, so I might lift the shoulder a little bit there or something. And, uh, and over here, the line where the dress meets the, the colour of the, um, the navy thing, where the dress meets the top underneath it. Um, let's see. If I was to draw a line through there, you know, see where that would enter and exit the face as well. I might shift it over a little bit. And it'll be different each time, but it's kind of nice to plot your way, to find your way through your painting. You know, and you'll have your own particular um, uh, landmarks. <coughs> okay. All right. I'm going to move it down a little bit. And you can let parts alone to dry. That's the kind of purpose in, in going down to the body and doing something free in the body area. It means that you can allow the face to dry and you can then work into it with um, marks that are clearer. I'll show you in a second. Um, and it also takes the heat off and it's good medicine for us to do something loose and lightly in the midst of the more keenly observed parts. And you're never working blindly. You are always, you know, really observing with care. And then as much as you can, Take a deep breath and commit to the mark, you know. <laughs> so it's lovely then when you can have that kind of response that's true to you. It's not a technique, it's a response that comes from you. Um, and so it's in, it's in, I think, first observing with care and really seeing what it is that you want to place down. So observing the colour and the shape. So I'm going to do that with the hair. And then choosing, selecting the, the colour that's going to work, but also selecting the, the tool size that, that most quickly and most easily explain what you've just seen. So you're considering, you're working up to the mark with a fair amount of um, consideration here. Uh, so is it, yeah, so the hair, okay. You're working up to the mark and then you can respond with a boldness. It's this boldness that we're always aiming for. That's the thing. And opening your chest makes you feel bold. Or doing anything that, you know, you'll know whatever it is that makes you feel like confident. Oh, uh, um, assume that stands today. Mm. You know, strut around. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually, you came with a peacock dress on, didn't you, first? Yes. Uh, <laughs> we, we opted for the blue one. Okay, so there's a peacock dress for anyone who wants to strut around like a peacock. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll just fill in that space there. Right, so it's talking about the, the hair. And if, by the coffee break, my, my, um, my advice would be that you would have an inspiring surface to work over that describes the body, that describes the face, and that describes the hair. Do you know, if you want to set yourself a series of steps, rather than think, oh, I better get to the eyes by the coffee break, I would suggest going for something that's, that you're still interested in, in terms of the surface. So create exciting, um, you know, do things that, that are unexpected. Make chance essential. Paul Klee said that. Make chance essential. Um, so you don't have to have a control. Yeah, you know that. Okay. And the wild goose thing as well. They say the wild goose thing. People don't. Just the people are new. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you can make a wild goose tame, but you can't make a tame goose wild. So if you start with this tentative, careful approach, it's difficult then to inject life and energy into it. Whereas if you begin, uh, as I was, was talking about, with this bold, boldness, or if you begin with something, and, and I'm not saying just splash paint on willy-nilly, it's like you're focusing really, and then you're attending to yourself and, and know, knowing 
you know, the steadiness in yourself, steady yourself, still yourself, and then commit to the mark. But it's not that you're, it's the committing to the mark is the thing, really, with a gung-ho attitude, you know, that's the thing. <coughs> and don't worry if it doesn't happen every time, for God's sake. <laughs> it takes a lot sometimes to work up to it, but all of this is uh, hopefully a good atmosphere for you. And we don't have to, um, we don't have to produce anything amazing, it's more about honouring the moment that we're in and taking what you can and responding to that. Knowing that it's good enough for now. It's good enough for now. Okay, so the shape that I saw there over the head is kind of like a triangle. Any time that you can break it down into a geometric shape, that's a very useful thing for you. So I saw that as a kind of a triangular shape there. And I'm making it with the alizarin crimson Elizabeth and Crimson, and um, I think the, the Viridian Green. So the Viridian Green is the dark red. The, so that's the dark red and the dark green. And I have these colours. If you don't have them, you can ask. Okay. Okay, and then behind there'll be hair back here, behind the ear as well. So you're looking at the shape. This is an opportunity actually to turn, turn the board. And if you're over there, you might be able to even anchor it in, but the ceiling isn't high enough here. Um, why am I turning the board? So that I can make that bun. Um, I'm going to make some of the alizarin crimson and viridian green. I'd say the 20 minutes is up now, but. Around. 33 seconds to go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 43 is my lucky number. <laughs> As an Irish person, that's a <laughs> tricky <laughs> one. <laughs> okay. Um, oh yeah. So if it was anchored in now, what I would do is I'd hold the... Does someone want to be my anchor? <laughs> you might get splashed, Richard. Is okay. that all right? That's all right, yeah. You see, then I can hold the palette over the face, so I could do that, you know. Um, yeah, just to get some sort of a... We were talking about this today, yeah, and it's yeah. quite a nice thing. That's okay now. Thanks very much, Richard. That's good. That's just 32 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then you can always leave it like that for a while if you want to have a wander about, shake, shake it off, you know, do something that allows you to breathe again. And then you'll see your painting with um, fresh eyes when you come back. Mm. And you go... So anything that allows you to feel like um, you're painting, thanks very much, Sal, that was great. Um, anything that, that brings something more into it, you know, it's, it's more than just what's on the page, it's kind of also where you begin and end the mark. Mm. We, we, we don't all have to be doing Tai Chi, <laughs> but just to have a, even acknowledge that there's more than just where I'm touching the paper. This comes with um, a, a life beyond the page. Mm. I don't know. I think mm. you get it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really get Pretty it. Pretty bold, that's the answer, answer, isn't it? Just I so think so. Slap it on. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, with consideration. Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 we don't want to be watching the scene. <laughs> it's okay, it regularly does end up on the scene. But um, I think the thing is, as, as important as the boldness is the stillness and the steadying oh. down when you're observing. Mm. So, um, I think there's a there, you you'll find the balance of that as you work through your painting. You know, you as long as you're um, observing the general shape of things, and then breathing and just mm. you know you can slowly. It isn't. I think boldness doesn't have to be what I'm doing. You know, all of that. It can be just knowing um, and doing it and leaving it alone, mm. and looking at the next thing, and doing it and leaving it alone. I don't always do this myself. See, in the yeah. studio on my own, I sometimes feel really like, oh, I don't know what to, uh, you know, I don't feel a bit bold. But, but um, I think it's possible, you know, I think it's possible for all of us. And that's my, um, my desire, really, or my wish, or whatever it is for you, is to engage that, at some, even for a few seconds of, of the day. It's a lovely thing to, to feel that you've got this, um, yeah. Free, yeah, freedom. Freedom. Mm. Freedom, mm. yeah. Yay, freedom! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, yeah, so I hope that's not too daunting a thing either. Do you know, it's not meant to be that way because we're only, uh, we're not performing for anybody else. This is for yourself to, you've, permission, you've given yourself permission to be here 
and um, to celebrate your creative, mm. you know, anyway, yeah. Just to, you've given yourself permission and well done for that. <laughs>